Oh, man. I, I actually had uh, somebody come up to me after a show and say, you know, I could tell you had a girlfriend by the way your hair looked. I was like, man, by the way my hair looked, I didn't get the memo. I didn't really know you could tell. I mean, okay, I knew a mullet was a no-no, but <laughs> besides that, I didn't really know. Cause it, and it confused me. Because it's not like I walk into Fantastic Sam, sit down in the chair and say, you know, I don't know what I want to do today, but can you please make sure it looks like I have a girlfriend when I walk out of here? <laughs> no, you know what this hair is a result of? The fact that no one walks out of Fantastic Sam's happy. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic Sam, super cuts, it's all the same thing. Four or five hairdressers, only one good one. Yeah. It's like the Russian roulette of haircutting, you know? You walk in, you put your name on the list, you're like, oh yeah, it'll be 15, 20 minutes, go ahead and have a seat. We'll call you when we're ready. You turn back to have a seat back here. There's a bunch of grown ass people back here doing Hail Marys and praying, <laughs> saying, please, please, just let me have the one good hairdresser. Not gonna happen. There's a guy over there in the corner with a calculator saying, if I divide by two, that guy has a buzz cut, that guy has a heart attack. I have a one in 10 chance of getting someone that does not suck. <laughs> not gonna happen, no. And call me silly, I think it's completely okay to judge how good a hairdresser's gonna be by the way their hair looks. <laughs> yeah, my hairdresser always comes to get me. She's got the blonde hair and the one pink dyed strip going down the back of her hair, you know? She looks like she's watched one too many VH1. I love the 80s specials. I'm like, oh no, this is gonna be fun. And then they walk you down that, that aisle or whatever they call it to that chair that they pump you up in, you know? I like to refer to it as the torture chamber. Um, and they sit you down in that torture chamber and I don't know what happens, but your hairstylist no longer knows the standard unit of measurement. <laughs> No, you're up there, you're like, yeah, let's take a quarter of an inch off, not much. They're up there screwing around with your hair for like 15 or 20 minutes. You're looking down going, if you're cutting my hair, shouldn't hair be falling? Yeah, they're not doing a damn thing. Then you make the cardinal, the cardinal sin of going in there and say, let's take a half inch off. <laughs> you're getting a buzz cut. <laughs> I did that once, I was like, let's take a half inch off. I'm driving home, looking in the rear view mirror going, huh, that's odd, I can't normally see my scalp. At the end, they always like it. They always ask, do you like it? Run your fingers through it. Do you like your haircut? And I'm always polite to a fault. But just once, I want to say what I'm really thinking, which is, oh my gosh, you're gifted. Truly gifted. And it would be even better if today was the haircut that was the special that came with the free paper bag. <laughs> and bonus if the eye holes are already cut into it. I'm just saying. It'd work. It'd work. Um, I got to get the heck out of here, but I got one last thing for you guys. I have a really awesome dog. I do, he's amazing. Everybody loves my dog. They always come up to me, they're like, you know, if I believed in reincarnation, I'd wanna come back as your dog. I'm like, really? I don't wanna step on your life's ambitions, but his favorite snack is cat crap. <laughs> Thank you guys, my name's Rhiannon Hawkins.